Hello, my name is Alia Sadegpour, and I will be discussing the psychological, behavioral, and societal benefits of video games. I'm going to be 100% honest. This poster is something that I actually received off of Psychology Today's website. Absolutely fantastic. The amount of research that these individuals did and the compilation of information that they did, unbelievable. So I 100% accredit this information to those individuals working so hard. It is a great feeling to have video game advocates coming together and providing the actual physical scientific evidence as rationale for video game players. I absolutely love it. So if you would like this same thing, go to Psychology Today, please download it, embed it on your own website, let's spread the word. So at this point I'm going to be discussing game changers, leveling up the social benefits of video games. So what we need to understand is that people are playing video games more than ever. There are 160 million video game players in the United States alone. That's a 40% increase since 2006. In the span of six years, we have grown 40%. By the age of 21, the typical American has spent 10,000 hours playing computer games. Could you imagine if we used perhaps half of that time, let's say 5,000 hours, and instead they weren't just playing computer games, but they were learning. It is unbelievable. We have an untapped market and a huge population of video game players that sh if they were incorporated into the education system, I believe that we would just flourish and we would do incredibly well. Video games also increase problem solving and creativity. So there are a lot of negative connotations with video games in that they stifle critical thinking. They stifle creativity. It cr creates monotone, uh, robotic-like individuals. And it's just not true. It's just not true. What we have found in creating, looking at brains playing video games, reading, listening to music, video games have the unique ability to trigger more areas of the brain than reading a book, than listening to music. It has the ability to trigger all of these areas simultaneously. For example, dopamine. So when an individual plays a plays a game and they adhere, they reach the next level, they save the princess. Dopamine is released in the brain which creates a sense and feeling of reward driven learning. They want to get to the next level. They want to do better. It is literally a chemical released in their brain telling them to do so. What else is interesting is the hippocampus is responsible for processing sensory information and memory. So when a student or when a gamer is playing a video game what they are learning and what they are doing in the game is immediately processed and placed into memory. That is unbelievable. Imagine how many hours you spent trying to study AP Euro. Imagine how many hours you had to recite mathematical formulas over and over and over again. Imagine if you could play a game that would process it even more quickly. What else is interesting is that we realize that the orbital frontal cortex has the decision-making and logic ability when and games exercise that area when gamers are playing. So we have the ability to think logically and critically about our actions. What else is interesting is that the hypothalamus, when relating positively with other people, there's a chemical known as oxytocin. Oxytocin is a chemical released by a between a mother and her breastfeeding child. It's the same type of chemical that is released. And this chemical is often released when gamers are playing with other gamers online. So the infamous Call of Duty all weekend, what's not being realized is the fact that the reason why they're playing is not only because it's enjoyable, not only because they're playing with their friends, but they're also experiencing a release of oxytocin, which increases their feeling of unity, which increases their teamwork ability. The last one is the dorsal cingulate cortex. Video game players have greater activity in this area which controls cognition and planning. For a long time, we did not feel that the orbital frontal cortex or the dorsal cingulate cortex were being triggered because we did not feel that video games could lead or lend to critical thinking abilities. But what we have realized is the exact opposite. Both of these areas are triggered and both of these areas uniquely cause the gamer to think. You can't just play a game. You actually have to think about it logically. It could be as simple as, I need to jump over this pit. Or it could be as complex as, I need to pick up on the individual's facial expressions in order to interrogate them or figure out if they're lying in this case. The complexity is so varied, and it needs to